Today, we're going to talk about using the animation pane. The silent demo went over the highlights real quickly, but we're going to get into some of the finer points. Using the animation pane will help you see the intricacies of your animation. You can have two, three, four, five, even more animations per slide. And using animation pane will help you see those intricacy, intricacies without having to go back to the slideshow view, make an adjustment, and then redo it. it. It basically gives you a little window or a little box to where you can see what's going on. So you can tweak the animations to what you really want to display. It negates having to go to slideshow view. And if you go to the slide, sorter view, you can actually see the slides that have animation. We'll go over that in just a minute. Now, animations differ from transitions. Transitions typically are the entire slide moving from one slide location to the next slide location or number, where animations affect what's on each individual slide. And we're going to show you that there are over 160 different animations that you can use. And we'll go over that starting now. So once you go to the animation uh, screen, you'll select animation, of course, and then animation pane. And you can animate, as it says here, text, pictures, shapes, tables, smart art, smart art, and other objects, and even a group of objects. So once you click on the animation pane, button, the pane opens up on the right side. And it will list the current animations. And from there, you can modify the timing, the triggering, whether it's on a click or a pause or this previous slide or with the current slide, whether you want to have the animation enter, exit, or have emphasis or have motion. Also durations, and there's, and there's other things. You can, as you see, you can reach, rearrange the order of the buttons. Here's a example or a sample of a previous slide that I built for another organization. You notice the animation numbers are here, which matches what's here. And once you open it up, it'll tell you that welcome is the first one, and they're all in the same timeline. We'll show you the timeline in just a little bit. So by clicking on the first animation, welcome, it tells you that it's on click, it's a fade, and it's going to exit, which means it's already displayed once the slide comes up. Once you click on it, it's going to fade away. So we'll show some examples of other slides having the data, um, not slide, but enter into the slide, this particular one, the data is, or the line is leaving the slide. And it's based on a click as far as the action or the triggering. And that's what I was trying to say earlier. You can start on the click, you can start with the previous or start after the previous. Those are the three ways you start the animation. And as you see here, there are other options, which is the same as this here, which is going to vary on the type of animation that you have. There's timing. Do you want a delay? Do you want to not have a delay? How long of a delay? How fast do you want the animation to occur? Do you want it to happen quickly, not so quickly, moderately? Typically, there's five different speeds that the animation can uh, be shown or disappear. The advanced timeline is basically this timeline down here. This will show you how long each animation is and how long the sum of the animations are for a particular slide. And then, of course, you can re remove the animation here. These two buttons will let you rearrange the order of the slides, which is uh, on this slide here, you could have rearranged any of them by just sliding the particular item up or down. So as we move on, 
Okay, we're gonna switch to edit view and build a new example for you to see how it's all comes together. A couple of more things before we move on to edit view. The select pane will allow you to change the names of the objects. As you'll see in this example, whatever I have highlighted is content placeholder two. Well, what does that really mean? But you can actually go to the select pane of the animation to something that is in English that you can understand. This is slide sorter view that shows you that this slide, slide number three has transition, uh, not transition, animation. And actually I found out you can click on the animation star to show you, kind of give you a little preview of what's going on in that particular slide. Okay, now we get to our example. As you can tell, we are back in edit view. And I did want to show you the different animations before we got into our example. So if you just click on any, any of the active boxes, click on animations, and then if you click the middle arrow, it'll just show you the one that you're in. This is entrances, I believe. But if you click the double down arrow or more, then you can see the ones you have for entrance and the ones you have for emphasis. Pull this down. The ones you have for exiting and then the ones you have for motion. Well, you may say, well, it's not 160. Well, there's more. So if you slide down, you'll see all of these. And you have the option to preview the effect from this menuing slate. There was, those are the ones for emphasis. These are the ones for exiting. Quite a few, I believe it's 40. And then the ones for motion. There's a whole bunch of motion. So over 160 different animations you can select. Okay, now to our example. I've pre-listed what we're gonna do or just some, some sample data. Here's our to-do list. See if we can get through this correctly the first time. Okay, to show all animations, what you wanna do is highlight all of your animations, pick one, let's say fly in. Well, first of all, let's go and delete what we have. So we're gonna to go to animation pane and let's, let's remove those. So they start off clean. So you wanna paint them. Let's go with float in, move those to the top. Hit the uh, hit play selected, and if you watch the screen, they come in as one group. Got to maximize this. So now we want to make each line appear separately. Now, if we unhighlight this. This by doing it this way with nothing highlighted at the very beginning, all of the animation will display. So play from the beginning. Okay, there's the bullets. And you'll you'll notice that these are in the same timeline. They're all together. Where picture five is a little different. And if you notice the timeline also. It happens rather fast. So instead of just having these four 
pop in together, which is okay. Let's make them appear separately. So what you need to do, click on, click on, click on the first one, hit the drop down, go to timing. We're gonna have it have it to start on the click. We want a half second delay and a relatively fast duration, say one second. Notice how it shifted over. Now we, we want the second one. We want it to uh, start after the previous. Same half second delay. Notice how it's shifting along this timeline. And the same for the next two. Let's make this one a one, uh, a two second delay, just show you, so you can see the difference. And the third one, or the fourth one, let's have it start on a click with a two second delay, uh, let's say a three second delay. And we want it to come in real slow, five seconds. So now, We just paint the first four animations on the slide, hit play selected and watch the slide. The first one comes in, second one comes in, longer delay, third one comes in, and it got a five second delay, the fourth one comes in. Note the timeline down here. So it's, it took eight seconds. Let's watch the timeline took eight seconds to run all of those slides, or all of those animations. Now it's coming up on the fourth one right here. And notice how extremely slow it's coming in. So that's how you use the animation pane to modify your animation and to make it come in fast, slow, up, down, left, right, flip, whatever animation you want. Something else I want to show you, effect options. You can animate the text to come in all at once, which is what we've selected, come in by word or come in by letter. Let's just change it to word and look at the difference. Let's just select that one and hit play from. We got a three second delay, I believe it is. So you can see the words are slowly coming into focus, all right? That's how we change that effect. Now, the next thing, okay, we wanted the paragraph to flow different bottom. We did that really at the very beginning. And then on this next thing, we want the first line to be already shown and the others fly in from the right. So what you wanna do is remove the animations. You can either do it here individually or you can just go to none. And what you want to do is paint these three and we want them to fly in from the right. So we want to go to enter, uh, fly in. And if you paint those three again and go to effect options, you can see what direction you want to come in from. So we want to come in from the right, click it. Let's start it. Let's start the picture. Oh, let's move all five. Let's move all of these up. And as you can see, this is where you want to change the labeling of your animation because I'm, I'm missing point one. This is bullet point number one. But I guess we'll find it. Click on the first one. Oh, bullet point number one is going to be there automatically when the slide starts. So it moved in rather fast. We could slow it down, paint those three, go to timing, let the duration, see the duration is very fast. So let's slow it down some to maybe two seconds and give it a half second delay. Now let's play those three. 
a little different. Comes in from the right. Okay, now the last thing we want to do is to add clip art to appear, stay, then exit. And you can ignore that. That's just my version of a placeholder. We have a piece of clip out already chart, uh, added. It's picture number five. What I found out by reading, you can use the same graphic to come in and then go out. But what it needs to have is a little bit of a gap in the middle so it'll hang out and then you can remove it. So let's remove the animation that I already have on it. We're going to select the graphic and we want it to appear. So we're in the appear. So there's appear. Notice how picture five. What it is, we got these four, and then this is the fifth object. So picture five, you can click on it here, check the timing. We want to give it a, let's say a one second delay. Let's have it follow the others. Then we'll go back to this one, and then we'll say add animation. That's the key point here. You want to add animation, and we want it to exit. Let's just say it's going to fly out. So if we just look at those two, hit play now. It's there, and then it flew out. Let's go back to the very top and play it. There's bullet one, there's two, three, and four. And notice you can also repeat an activity up to 10 times or until you tell it to stop. Let's slow it down a little bit. Start from the top. Let's put a two second delay before this thing happens and we should be able to see it. And here comes our three bullets. Now there it is and now it slides off. So the real key is the delay in between the two actions that you want to happen side by side. That's it for animation pane. It, it appears a little complicated, but it's like programming. It's not that tough. You have to think about what you have and what do you want to do. There are no rules. Have fun with it. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you much.